to the Bald Truth Leadership Podcast, where you get straightforward, no-nonsense ideas on leadership and growth, both personally and professionally. It's brought to you by the Chief Coaching Officer of the Peak Performance Group. He's also a brilliant and successful serial entrepreneur. He's a two-time author. He's a certified executive coach. He's a sales genius. He's bald. Hey, now. And he's your host of the Bald Truth Leadership Podcast. Buckle your chin strap. Here's your host, Coach Rick Colster. Hey, 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 this is Coach Rick, and welcome to the Bald Truth Leadership Podcast. Remember to like and subscribe. We're on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, YouTube video. Make sure you like and subscribe, folks, to get every single episode. Today, we are bringing you a true leader, especially in that youth area, that important developing future leaders area. Mark Merrow is a founder of the nonprofit Champion of Choices. This guy is enthusiastic and it's contagious, folks, because he empowers people of all ages, all walks of life, to make positive choices. And that's one of the important things we do. We need to do positive choices that are going to lead to a more fulfilled life. And, you know, from his early days growing up as a in a single parent home up in Buffalo, New York, up my neck, neck of the woods in New Jersey from where I'm from, um, he always dreamed big and he knew how to set these lofty goals. He found success in hockey football, boxing. We're going to talk a little bit about his early athletic days. And then some of you may know him as WCW and WWE wrestling champion. For 14 years, he spent that time traveling around the country with the WWE, WCW as Johnny B. Bad. We remember him. And then wild man, Mark Merrill. And of course, marvelous Mark Merrill. Today, He's changed, changed a lot of things and changed a lot of lives. He shares his life story with thousands of people across the country. This message, he is inspiring. He changes lives and encourages people to dream big, achieve goals, value themselves, cherish relationships, and make a difference in the world. So we're going to learn more about the Champion of Choices. Today, I'm welcoming my friend, Mark Merrill, to the Ball Truth. Mark, welcome to the Ball Truth, brother. Coach Rick, it's great to be here, man. It's about time we got together, you know? I know. It's been a long time since we've we've cooked up. You've been down in Florida. Now you're in Atlanta. And uh, we met in Mexico, gosh, years ago. (laughs) Uh, Having a little fun there. So where do you want to go? Let's talk about this. Uh, You want to talk about early days in Buffalo? You want to talk about your athletic background, WFD, WCW? Oh man, we got so much to cover. You know, it's a, it's a journey of life, Rick. And you know, and I, I tell you, growing up, uh, I, you know, all the different paths I took in life, good, bad, up, down, you know, rich, poor, whatever, they all led to right here on the ball truth. Okay. So I wouldn't change anything. Okay. <laughs> but you know, let's talk about that. Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. We just yeah. went through snowmageddon here in Texas where we were having below zero temperatures for a week. And uh, so what was it like growing up in Buffalo? Well, you know, uh, obviously my parents got divorced when I was really young. I was only eight years old when my parents split and uh, it was, it was difficult as a kid. You really, you don't understand, you know, you, you question what's going on, you know, and and all you know is, you know, your dad coming home from dinner for dinner and, and all of a sudden that ends and you have to move out of the house and you move to a really rough section of Buffalo, the West side of Buffalo. We live in this little apartment and it was, it was a devastating time in our lives, but, you know, gosh, I look back on, on those times. It's when I started dreaming. I learned about, you know, wanting to achieve things in life, about work ethic, about um, dreaming big, you know, I'm uh, wanting a better life for myself and my family. I don't want to live like that. Who does, you know? Yeah. And um, it, it really propelled me into who I am today, I believe, you know, through our struggles, we find our strength. See, and that's a, that's a great message. And I know that's one of the messages that you're sharing. So how did you go from Buffalo, New York, um, and you, you played hockey, football, and you, I know you were a boxer. I knew that, but I didn't know you played hockey and football. So how yeah. did you go from that into professional wrestling? What was that? all about well it's uh, the uh, there's a huge journey in between there you know drug addiction a lot of problems in life and uh you know i was 30 years old 
And uh, what's the thing I think it's so cool about being friends with Diamond Dallas Page? We both started sure, sure. really late in our careers, you know. I didn't realize that. Um, I knew yeah. Dallas started in his 30s, but I didn't know you did as well. Yeah, yeah. I, it was, I was 30 years old, and um, I signed my first contract at 31. But at 30 years old, I remember um, I had a bunch of friends over my apartment, you know, drinking beers, hanging out, watching sure. TV. And one of my buddies, he had the remote control. He's flipping through the TV channels. And he landed on professional wrestling. And I was like, I can remember going, hey, guys, hold it there. Hold it there. Let me see this. Hey, you know what? I can do that. My <laughs> buddies bust out laughing. Yeah, go, how many guys have said that? Yeah, I can do look, that. Look, at, look at the size of these guys. They'll pick you over their head and throw you right out of that ring. I said, no, I'm serious. I can do that. They go, Mark, <laughs> you're 30 years old. What do you do? Start a pro career now? And I just said two words that I share with my audiences every day. Those two words are, I believe. You have to believe you can achieve things in life. You know, we're, we're often surrounded by so many negative people, Rick. People are going to tell you why you're not big enough, why you're not qualified, you're not smart enough. And the reason they tell you you can't do it is because they can't do it. Don't, don't, base, your, don't base your limitations on what other people think and say. You are not defined by others' opinions. And that's the, that's the life-changing mindset. And we talk a lot about mindset because we're all about leadership development and leaders have to have the right mindset all the time. So, and I love that you've got this, I believe mindset. And that's really what it takes is if you believe in yourself as a leader, you can now lead others. But if you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in your people, you don't believe in your ability, skills, and talents, you'll never take that next step into taking that leadership role. They'll always sit back and go, well, wait for somebody else to do it because, you know, that's important and I don't really know what I can do. And that voice is in your head that go with it. We talked about mindset. I've had a couple of um, former Navy SEALs and we talk about what they went through during their training. And they said it wasn't the physicalness. I mean, you, you obviously have the physical capability to do it, play sports, you, you're in shape, you know, know how to eat right, how to work out, how to stay in shape. But it was the mindset that made the difference in their success or their failure. Yeah. So th how did you go? How did you, how did you say, Oh, Hey, I'm going to do that from, I'm going to do that to signing a contract. There's a lot of work you know, involved. I'll, in I'll short the story down. I had to obviously find out where there was a wrestling school. I didn't know how to wrestle. And I found out that there was about, a, there was a wrestling school about an hour away from my, where I lived in Venice, Florida. It was in Tampa, Florida. So I sure. started driving there after work and on weekends and one year later, I signed my first contract with WCW as the character Johnny B. Bad. And, I, you know, I wrestled for a total of 14 years on and off. And it was just a, an incredible journey. And um, I, I look back on it. It's opened up so many doors in my life. Traveled the world. Met movie stars and superstars. It's just been incredible. So that's, that's, a, that's something, because of that, you've traveled all over the world as a professional wrestler. Um, now I call you a bringer of hope to yeah. future young leaders. So who were some of the most influential people in that time leading up to what you do now? I think, and how did they influence you? You, you said you met, you, you know, movie stars and superstars and sports stars. Who were some of those guys that you went, wow, that's, that knocked, knocked me back a bit. That's where I want to be. You know, I think the, um, my, one of the greatest mentors I had was uh, my boxing coach, Ray Rinaldi, who is okay. still very close to me. He's 94 years old now, still very close to me and just an amazing guy. But he's uh, he had boxing clubs in, in Syracuse, New York, where I was training. And he has saved and changed so many lives. So I grew up watching this and seeing this firsthand, how he dedicated his life to helping, um, you know, inner city kids or uh, underprivileged kids that that would never that would have gotten shot in gangs or killed or yep. whatever you know drug overdose he has saved so many lives and that always stuck with me because of the joy he always had you know whenever he walked into the the gym he's always just seemed like he was in a good mood and wanted to help people and I just I just gravitated to that you know I mean it's amazing how you are we just get, are automatically just attracted to positive people you know, like there's an old saying, do people like you see, do people like seeing you come into a room or leave the room? <laughs> I, I guess I like it much better when I'm coming in the room. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, that's where, where we do. I mean, I 
you you had a career in boxing and, and learned how to box. I just learned how to box in the in the basement of the YMCA in Orange, New Jersey. And it was a little probably he was he was probably 60 or so, right? But I thought he was 90 because I was 18. And little man, little Italian man named Furpo. All I knew was his name was Furpo. And he showed me how to throw a hook. And he's told, this is what he taught me. Boxing, he says, put out the cigarette, put out the cigarette, put with your, with your foot, <laughs> like you're, like you're grinding a cigarette and that, yeah, that, yes, and that gets yeah, your yeah, hips and turn everything into, else. Turn into punch, yeah. 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 And that's all I, re- that's what I remember is put out the cigarette as you throw in the punch. That's good. That's so, good. Yeah. And he made a difference in my life because, you know, I ran nightclubs for years and that's where I met Dallas in, is in a nightclub in New Jersey. You know, that's, we've been around, he and I have been around hanging around for 40 years now. And that's, it's, that's crazy, but it's, it's, it's the difference you make in the lives of the people that you run into. And again, do they want to see you coming or see you going? And I love that. So, so moving on and looking at that is people who influence others, what drove you to do what you do now to, to be out there on the road. We talked about it in in the pre-show is you're out there hundreds of days a year talking to students and people what drove you to do that well rick as you know th- there's no greater joy than helping another person you know every day we receive letter after letter of people say that you know you changed my life or even you saved my life and it just it, it just propels you I mean, you could be having a bad day open up your laptop and start reading letters of people that said that you changed or saved them you know and um you know like today is uh today is my mother's birthday and I, obviously the video that went viral was about my mom yeah and happy birthday if mom you, so I put up I, I put up a pictures of my mom today and you know wishing her a happy heavenly birthday and when you start reading the posts underneath the people that said that I saw that video and it changed my life and brought me closer to my family or my mom or dad, it just brings so much joy to my heart. And, um, you know, I, I look at the things I've done in my life, um, things I've, I've accomplished, you know, um, I think nothing compares to the joy I feel or have by helping another person. I, it's like you, you find you work your whole life to find your calling or find your purpose in life. And I really believe that this is what I was meant to do. Well, that's all. See, we're at the Peak Performance Group, we created a, uh, I don't know if you're, you're aware, we created a program called the Emerging Leaders Academy. And it's really designed for young, le- to develop young leaders. And the whole concept behind it is servant leadership. Mm, yes. And it's, it comes from the Bible. It's a biblical principle. You know, how do you serve those that you are leading? And when you're on stage, you're the leader. No, no doubt about it. You're the guy, you've got the mic, you've got the, the platform. And it's really like you're serving the people in your audience, not them giving you the applause, which is always nice to get. But as you serve them, how's that transference of energy? How does that feel for you when you do that? Well, I always believe that the, your greatest testimony is the way you live your life. And, you know, you know, I, I, leading by example is so important. You know, I mean, we have a lot of eyes on us, you know, as, as leaders and a lot of people look, look up to us, you know, and you want to, you want to be a, a, a good role model, you know, and, and, but don't get me wrong. None of us are perfect. You know, we all make mistakes and, and uh, I'm the first one to say, Hey, this is what I did wrong. And I share where my good choices took me, but I'm blatantly honest where those bad choices took me. Sure and open up. And I think that's why I connect with these students, these young, the, the, the toughest crowd out there is these young kids. And the reason I connect with them is because they go, man, that guy's, that guy's telling the truth. He's being real up there. And, and that's so important. You know, I'm, I got, I got nothing to hide. I mean, I've, I've opened up about my drug addiction, about my, my bad choices in life, hurting other people, uh, the way I treated my own mother and father, brother and sister, and people that I lost in my life so young. And my little brother and sister, they died at 21. My mom was only 58 when she died. And my dad died while I was holding him in my arms. So losing so much, you know, we, we often take for granted the very things in life we should appreciate. And sometimes you don't realize it until it's too late. So I pray that my heartbreak is other people's wake up call. Okay. So, uh, so I love that when you, you look at this and you say, okay, now doing more, what got you, what was the f- switch that flipped? I mean, somewhere along the line, you went from Johnny B. Bad, who is 
the bad guy, the tough guy. And as you said, some of the things that you were doing, some of the, the bad choices you were making, and I love the honesty, but what was the switch that flipped that took you from, I'm going to be making these kind of crazy choices here to, I need to give back. Was there, was there a moment? Was there something? Was there, it, what was it? The defining it? moment in my life was in 2003. I was uh, going through my divorce. Uh, the drugs came back into my life after being away from drugs for a while. Uh, depression, anxiety. And uh, I'll never forget because it was, it was Christmas Day. And I remember thinking, you know, I mean, Christmas was always a big deal, you know, the, the sure. birth of our Savior, Christmas tree, presents, music, food, family, you know, uh, gatherings. And, and it was Christmas Day and I had no place to go. And I was just sitting there alone. Um, and I unfortunately lost my little brother and sister. And of course, everybody knows about my mom dying, my dad dying, and my ex-wife walked out the door. And it was just one of the most painful times in my life. And I remember driving, the, uh, I was living in, um, in Orlando. I drove to Cocoa Beach, Florida. And I sat under a pier on Christmas Day. And I just watched the waves roll in and roll out. I just... Um, I just contemplated the end. I didn't want to be here no more. I felt there was no, there, there, there was no more hope. I just didn't feel it. I didn't, didn't want to be here anymore. I was just tired, man. I was just so, I hated myself. I really did. I, I couldn't stand looking at myself. I, I was way, way overweight. Um, I, I just was a shell of who I once was. And I drove home and I retrieved my handgun. And um, I got into I had this big walk-in showers at a house that I was selling because it was like a, the housing market was horrible. I had just the worst time, you know. And I, I remember just putting the gun up to my, my temple and putting my back against the wall. And the idea was I would slide down the wall and when my bottom hit the ground, I would pull the trigger, kind of almost like a wrestling bump, you know. And as I was sitting there, all of a sudden, this vision comes into my head, this thought, I guess, whatever you want to call it, you know. It was, um, it was my mom, my brother, my sister, the good times, the laughter, you know, uh, just all the things, Christmas Day, all the things that I remembered, you know. And then I start sliding down the wall and this vision of hell comes into my head. I mean, it was, it was so clear too. It was like just this amazing picture I saw. And there was, it was like a sea of people and um, nobody was talking to each other. They were just screaming. And I just remember that this ain't a place I want to go. It's not a place I'd want anyone to go. And I fell to my knees. I pushed the gun away from me, pointed away from me. And I just started begging God for forgiveness. I, I didn't know what I would do. I didn't know I, I needed to get a job. I didn't know where I would go, what I would do, how I would support myself. You know, um, it was just, it was just, but I didn't care. It was like, I was just pleading to God, you know, I'm sorry, you know, please help me. And I just felt this amazing, I don't know, it's almost like someone just picked me up and just said, you're going to make it, man. I didn't That's know what I was going to do. So I went and got a job. I was I was a personal trainer at Gold's Gym. <laughs> it was my first <laughs> job after being a professional wrestler. You know, and it was so funny, Rick, because people would come in and and not to demean anyone in the gym industry. I don't, please don't take this wrong. But they'd say, Mark Merrill, they go, oh my gosh, what are you doing here? And I'd say, well, I, I work here. And they go, you work at Gold's Gym? Like, it was almost like, are you kidding me? You know? But How far I, the great I, have fallen. Yeah. But you know what? My clients got the best results, and I opened up, and then I eventually saved enough money to open my own gym, right. and that took off. And, and But then I got a call from Melbourne High School. It was a football coach. He wanted to come and speak to the football players about not doing steroids and stuff, you know? Okay. And I just remember getting emails from the kids saying, man, you really changed my life, and I thought, wow, what a great feeling that was to make a difference in a young person's life. And it just, Rick, it's a long story, but it just snowballed from there. And it got more and more. And as you know, Dallas is the one that shot the video. His crew, Steve, you and their crew sure. shot the video of my mother's love video that went viral. And that opened up doors all over the world. I went to Russia and spoke at schools in Russia. Last year, we were in Guatemala. It's just been an incredible journey. And I average about 230 events a year now. That's that, And that's a lot of travel. And as a, as, as a professional speaker myself, you know, 50 gigs a year is a lot. But you're doing 230. So you're 
you're going every single day, one, maybe two, just, two times about, a day. But Rick, we do most of those in 10 months because remember school's not open all year That's round. Right. Yeah. So we, we do sometimes up to five in a day and each one's wow. an hour on stage. So it takes its toll on you. Oh, it does. It wears, I was just uh, facilitating our leadership program this past week and it was five, four hour blocks when I teach. And um, I come home whipped out. I fell asleep when I got home and I was just, I was out. I slept eight solid, rock solid hours. We had a huge storm here. I didn't even hear a storm. But, uh, so you mentioned hope and it was interesting as you mentioned hope as you're telling a story. And hope is the mantra that you share with your audiences. Um, is that where that came from? Well, you know, when you walk, when you walk with hope in your heart, you never walk alone. And we use the acronym hope is hold on pain ends. And that's just hoping, you know, it's a, just just believing that it's going to be better, you know, because, you know, some, so many times, Rick, we we build obstacles in our head that are not even there. We always go to, we always seem to go to worst case scenarios, you know, oh, what is, do I never get a job or, you know, what happens if this happens? And we always seem to go to worst case scenarios. And I, I really call that MSU. You. I call that MSU. And what Making does that stand up. for? Making what shit up. We just make shit up all the time. <laughs> you know, something we, you know, we listen to the enemy. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's an old uh, Native American saying that says we have two wolves that live inside of us. There's a, a positive wolf and a negative wolf. And the one that becomes most powerful is the one you feed the most. That's right. And too many of us are feeding that negative wolf. And then positive self-affirmations are so important, you know. Uh, you know, Henry Ford, and I know Dallas uses this a lot, is that Henry Ford once said, if you say you can or you say you can't, you're right. You know, exactly. it's what you believe. It's what you, you know, our perception is becomes our reality. What you believe is what you, per what you perceive is what you'll believe, you know? Yeah, one of the things we use, I use is GIGO, G-I-G-O. And it's an old computer programming term because I'm kind of a geek. And, um, but it means garbage in, garbage out. You put in crappy code, you're, gonna, yeah. you're not going to get a good program out. And I call it good in, good out. You put good in, you're going to get good out. It's because what we tell ourselves is what we believe over and over and over again. So if you're listening to the news, you're listening to the negatives, oh, you can't do that. And you own that. And you, then you end up with that degree in it from MSU making stuff up. And it's you build on that. You build on this is never going to happen. Oh my God, I'm going to go broke. I want to be on Skid Row. I'm going to, oh my God. And you keep telling yourself all these things that could possibly go wrong instead of taking action and doing what it's gonna to take to make it work for you. And we get caught up in that downward spiral too often. Yes, we do. And you know, and, and it's such an easy concept. And when people say, oh, it's so easy for you to say, you know, you know what, it's, it's, it's easy to do. It's not easy, it's, it's easier to say, but it's easy to do. If you just start giving yourself some positive self-affirmations, you know, uh, write down a, a goal. Like uh, when I wanted to write a book, Rick, all I did was I took a post-it note, I stuck it on my computer and all it said was book two years. Now, no one ever know what that meant, book two years. You know, it's on my computer. Every time I open my laptop, what do I see? Book two okay. years, you know, and every day I saw that, it gave me a, a reminder because so many times we 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 say we want to do something and all of a sudden months, weeks, weeks, months, years go by and we say, oh, I always wanted to do that. But when it's in front of you, it forces you to take action towards a goal or a dream. Well, write down well, something, positive self-affirmations and write things down. Well, tell us about the book then. Well, this was, Rick, this was my first book. This was uh, over 10 years ago, 2000, okay. 2010. I wrote a book called How to Be the Happiest Person on the Planet. And it was just, uh, it, was, it was part of my, my story, but it was just things that I've learned over my own life about, you know, things I've gone through or, or you know, whether it's depression or anxiety or, or, or suicidal thoughts, things that I, I, I endured. And I look back on my life and, and I got to tell you that so many people that, that probably listen to this podcast have, have gone through some things, probably a lot worse than maybe you and I have gone through in life, you know? And I often think that, especially people that are, are, are suicidal or people that just have lost hope, you know, every morning I wake up, I look up and I am so thankful that I am here. And I didn't make that decision to end my life. I never would have known all the great things that were coming. <laughs> all, all of the new friends I'd meet, you know, new love, new romance, new, new purpose in life. The things I never would have known if I would have ended my life. 
And, and so many times, you know, it's a temporary thing that we go through where we just feel like there's no hope. And if you can just get a person to hang on for a minute, an hour, a day, and it, it, it's like a snowball effect. And you keep them going, you keep them going, you keep them going. We've got so many young people that have seen me, you know, 10, almost 15 years ago, that now one girl that tried to um, uh, hang herself, the rope broke. And uh, the next day I came to her school, not, not even knowing anything about what happened to her, you know, sure, sure. Uh, her parents contacted me, she contacted me after this, but she said the presentation saved her life. She never committed, she never tried to commit suicide again. She recently just had a baby. <laughs> so oh, I think cool. about how, what a beautiful thing it is to know that, that I was a part of helping someone get through her difficulty in life. And now she's a proud mama. And it's just so beautiful to, to see story after story like that by just holding on, by having hope, by not giving up. You know, and, and, and I'll tell you, Rick, one of the things that I think is so important for people that are going through depression or anxiety or, or feel hopeless, help another person. I got to tell you something, you know, when you're able to talk about it, you are opening up doors that, that, that many would feel, oh, I thought I was all alone. I didn't know other people were also going through this. And I think that's what people, some people might be seen as this, this guy that was a professional wrestler, had all these, all this money and all this fame and stuff. Oh my gosh. And they see me open up and go, wow, I can relate to that. I, I feel the same way, or I went through that. So help another person. You want to be happy, help another person become happy. That's and what a great message to everybody. So for, from leader, from a leader perspective, because we, we really like to focus on, you know, how do we build leaders moving forward is having that hope. How do you, as a servant leader, from your perspective, what are some things that someone can do to, to maintain that servant leadership mindset? And I know it's giving back, you know, the answer is giving back, but from your perspective, you know, we teach at, at, during, during our emerging leaders program, we teach our young leaders to give back, flip the, the typical pyramid, you know, the hierarchical pyramid where the boss is at the top and the workers are at the bottom, flip that upside down where you're, where the workers, you know, typically workers serve the boss, make the boss happy and make the boss a lot of money, flip that upside down. And what's the boss got to do to help his employees and the people that work for him or her and make them successful. So as, as you, as you, think about that your message is really sharing that in a, in a business setting as well it works you know, in a Rick, business setting as well it's so true i obviously obviously it's biblical principle the more you give the more you get back in your own yeah. life i say given why you're living so you're knowing where it's going <laughs> and but i i find that you know to really inspire other people and, and especially in my business and, and things that i do is attitude, man, you know, having a great attitude. When people see me uh, come in, I'm happy, I'm smiling. I'm just like, good to see people. I'm excited about being here. And I just think that energy lifts the room, you know, and it's automatically it's so easy to, to for people to open up and talk to you because they see that, you know, you're, you're easy to talk to, you're, 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 you're happy. Sure. You know, you you've overcome adversity in your own life, and how could that guy be so happy? He lost so many people in his life, you know. But I gotta tell you, and, and when, when people say that, go, you know, I can't get over my mom dying, or my dad dying, or my husband or wife, or whatever it would be, the divorce or something, you know. And I often say, you know, the people that you may have lost in life, if they ever saw you depressed or constantly mourning or not getting on with your life, they would be so hurt themselves. My mom would be heartbroken to see me going, oh, I can't believe she's gone. I treated her so bad. She'd be like, get up and get out there, you know? So yeah. you got to you gotta understand that these people that you lost in life, are, they loved you. They don't want to see you hurting. And that's, as, you, as you, you're like me. As you walk in, people ask me, how you're doing? It's like, I haven't had a, living the best life. If I was any better, I'd be twins. You know, yeah. and that's what it is. I feel so good about and blessed. Because like you, I've gotten knocked down a few times. I've gotten my knees cut out from under me, been broke on the side of, side of the street. I remember in Houston, when I was living in Houston back in the 80s, um, all within the span of a month, I, I got kicked out of my house, the apartment I was living in. My car got repossessed, and I got fired from my job, all within the span of a couple of weeks. So, so I, was, I was homeless, horseless, and hopeless. <laughs> And it's, it, that's what it felt like. It's like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? Like, shoot. Ooh. And I, I 
spent that one day, two days going, oh, what am I going to do? And that was back in the days when I partied pretty hard. And I finally picked up the phone and it was a regular f- wired phone. Now we didn't have cell phones back in those days. Called a friend of mine. I said, I need help. Can you help me? He says, come down. I'll put you to work. You can start tomorrow. So I went back. I was yeah, in the club. Rick, you, so I, you just and, said something so important right there is you called for help. Yeah. And so many times we have so much pride or we don't want to, we feel like we're bugging someone or something, man, don't be afraid to ask for help. We all need it at one time or another. Thank God you had someone in your life that was there for you and, and could, could offer you or help you, but you had to reach okay. out and ask, you know, well, and that's, the, that's the important part is don't be afraid to ask and leaders, same thing. So if you, as you're listening to the podcast or you're watching the podcast with Mark and I leaders, if you're struggling find help. It could be a mentor. It could be a friend. It could be get a coach. I mean, goodness gracious, you know, you talked about your boxing coach and he brought you still stay in touch with them. You say, right. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I had a, a student this just this last week, he played uh, professional football, played for the uh, St. Louis Rams. And he says the most influential person leader in my life was my college offensive line line coach. And he says, to this day, he still checks in with me once a month. And we still check in with each other. Wow. So who are those people in your life that have made a difference in your life? Are you not wanting to call them because you haven't talked to them in a while? Are you not wanting to call them because you're afraid they won't want to hear you? They do. They really want to hear from you. And so leaders that are listening, if you're struggling, reach out. Reach out for somebody and just bounce an idea. Of them. If it's nothing more than to say hello Say, hey, I could use your advice on this. Let yourself do that. And I think that's it. So um, I know, Mark, you've you got a busy schedule. You're prepping for some stuff coming up. And um, so as we wrap up here, I got a couple things. Um, I really got wanted to know what's some important points that leaders can focus on that you can share with them, they can share with their teams. What, from your perspective, what would you say to leaders that are listening Say, what are the important points that they can focus on and share with their teams? Well, first and foremost, I believe your example is so important. You know, your your work ethic. When people see you not afraid to get your hands dirty, uh, you know, being, you know, the whole thing is, is I, I always believe I wasn't always the smartest or the biggest, but I was, I always felt I worked the hardest. You know, I, I, I really had that work ethic and it's so important. And I think we've started to lose that in this, in this country. We've lost that that work ethic that maybe our parents or grandparents had. We're seeing a younger generation that's, um, you know, are are so, I I watch, you know, I deal with a lot of students, you know, and and students can get on, for example, I can get on, I'm not trying to put anyone down or whatever, but it's just like they can get on TikTok. And then next thing you know, six hours has gone by. Six hours of their life, they've they've absolutely gained nothing other than some entertainment but I think about, we often don't think about our future and how easy it is to work. You use that same internet and research someone that you admire. How did they get to the point they got to? You know, you, most successful people leave a trail of success. where they go to school? how they get their first job? There's so much to learn about people that you can accomplish them and, and make it your own. You know, you want to invent something. You want to write a book. Uh, you, anyone can write a book now. Maybe you can self-publish a book, you know, yep. take the time and write it. Uh, there's so many things that I think that you can, you can do that we, we often, um, we become a little lazy, you know, and, 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 and I think we've all at some time been guilty of that, you know, but it's like, what do you really want in your life? You know, I, I, I be honest with you, people go, well, Mark, you're, you're going to be 61 this summer. They go, you ever think about retiring? I retire. <laughs> I'm not going to retire. I'm going to refire, man. I'm going to keep, keep reinventing myself. I'm going to be bouncing back. The thing that people have to realize, and, and leaders listen, this is so important. My life, Rick's life is not perfect. You know, we can come out here and talk and, and inspire other people, but our lives are not perfect. It's not about our circumstance or situation. We're all in this pandemic. It's how you respond to it makes all the difference. You have to ask yourself, how are you responding to this adverse time in our lives? Yeah, and so many people have changed the way that they do business. This pandemic is really, it's, it's been an interesting eye-opening time. And I'm, I'm seeing people rise to the occasion. 
and some are not. And that's, that's the sad part is some are using it as an excuse, but the, the great ones, the great leaders, they're rising to the occasion and they're making this the best they can, utilizing it the best way that they can. So that's, and I, you nailed it, Mark. You said, what are you going to do? What's your attitude? And get up there and take some action and do something. So, all right. So what's next? Any projects on the horizon for you? What do you got? What do you, you got? Know, in, I'm, in the I'm excited because, you know, it's about bouncing back and reinventing yourself. Oh, well, but we can't go to schools right now because of the pandemic. We're, they're not doing assemblies or anything like that. But uh, we're doing virtual events, which is uh, okay. it's a whole different ball game now. Because you know, Rick, it's kind of funny because I, 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 I love live audiences. You know, I love you know what's so cool is it got it got so big that they started busing kids into uh, arenas for us, like in wow. Texas, they bus in ten thousand kids at a time. You know, and it was like walking out there. It's like oh my gosh, like back in the wrestling days. You know, but um. <laughs> I, I'm going to be speaking at, I got uh, oh, Seminole High School next week and uh, Baina Point Middle School. And I'll be speaking to students. The only hard part about it is obviously I'm looking at a camera and not seeing an audience. But the, I guess the great thing is, is you still get those letters that say, man, you changed my life. And that's so important. It's like the feedback you get from students because when you're in a live audience, you can, you, your, your voice, your tonage, there's so many things you can adjust to how an audience is that you learn over just naturally mm-hmm. by doing it so many yeah. times, you know? Uh, but uh, I'm blessed to be doing this. It's about, like I said, reinventing yourself in a sense. I never thought I'd be doing virtual events, but I love doing them in the meantime until we can get back out there. And I, I, I assume next school year, we'll be able to get back out I there. Think we're, yeah, we're going to be coming back. I'm pretty sure we're starting to yeah. see things open up. A and, and you know what, Rick, is, is we're going to realize how much we actually missed <laughs> these live audiences. I mean, I think about it, just, I, I get butterflies even thinking about, you know, going back out in front of live audience, because when you do it every day, you get, you know, it's like exciting, you know, but when you haven't done it in a while, it's kind of like, oh, man, I still got it, <laughs> you know, and so exactly. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That's great, man. So uh, how can people get a hold of you? You know what? My name is Mark with a C, M-A-R-C-M-E-R-O, and uh, it's uh, at Mark Mero on Twitter and Instagram. And of course, our YouTube channel has got a lot of our inspirational videos. You can see it's uh, uh, youtube.com and it's um, the Mark Mero. So check that out and uh, just type my name and you'll, you'll find me. Okay. So you want to Google Mark with the C, M-A-R-C Mero and uh, Google him. Check him out. He's got some great stuff. You got to If you haven't seen that viral video that went viral about his mom, folks, bring your tissues and then click on play. I got to tell you, I've watched it three, four, five, six times. And every time I go, damn, Mark, I just, <laughs> damn, what are you doing to me here? So, all right, Mark, there's one thing I, I forgot to tell you in pre-show is I always like to ask three questions of the folks that are on the bald truth. And it's kind of a touch your heart kind of questions to see who, what you're really made of. Okay. All right. So here's what it is. Think about this. You're holding a dinner party for six, yourself included. So you get to invite five people. Who do you invite? Now, the thing is, you can invite. um, I'm cold blooded when it comes to this. Now, you can invite anybody in all of history, brother. Oh, all all of history, huh? Anybody in all of history, you can invite. Who do? What five people do you invite to this dinner party? Oh man, I, I, you. That's actually easy for me. Okay. Okay. Good. Man, I'd bring my mom and dad back. I'd bring Amen. my little brother and sister back. That's four. And if you want to include me, there's five. <laughs> you get one more. You get one more. Oh, I, I got one more person. Well, my brother Joel. Or, or, there you gosh, go. I left out my sister Jody. I can't do that. Okay, they'll share a chair. Okay. <laughs> and one butt cheek on each one. Right? <laughs> that's great. Then, you know, that's beautiful because it's all about family. Yes, and that's what it is. I it think is. that's an important you know, thing. It was all about and that's so important, Rick, is that I just want to share this with you before you ask me the next question. Life is about relationships. Man, when you leave this planet, you are not going to care how many followers you had on social media. You're going to ask for your husband, your wife, your kids. Relationships, man, make them stronger. Yeah, amen to that. So, okay, now here's another big one. An article is being written about you after you're gone. We all have an expiration date. We don't know what it is, but an article is being written about Mark Merrow What's the title? Not what's in it, but what's the title? Uh, the title. Um, that headline. He made a difference in others' 
other people's lives. Excellent. So now for our leaders out there, what do you do every morning to set yourself up for success? Man, before I, before I uh, get out of bed, man, I speak to God. I, it's so important. You know, the relationship with Christ is the most important relationship I will ever have. And um, it's, um, and I, I, I offer that to anyone out there just to, uh, Talk to God every morning. You know, you you would you would, if you, as you build that relationship, you'll see everything else fall in place too. Excellent, Mark. Great answers. I appreciate it, Matt. I appreciate you for spending time with us today, folks. Remember, Google Mark Merrow, M A R C M E R O. Uh, check out YouTube. Check out his Instagram. He's got some great stuff going on. I follow him. I'm watching his videos. You got to see these videos, folks. So get out there and. Uh, Check him out. He's uh, really appreciating that. Uh, his website is thinkpoz, P-O-Z, thinkpoz.org. If you want to know more about booking Mark, bringing him into your school um, virtually now, but in person in the future, I absolutely recommend that. Uh, so if you're listening and you, you're a leader and you want to sponsor him to come in, thinkpoz.org, bring him in. I'll tell you what, I want you, when you come to Texas, I definitely got some ideas for you here as well, Mark. Uh, thank you so much for being there. thank you for being here folks it's been a great one this is one of the good ones here as a good man and uh it's been a fun podcast catching up with mark and talking with them i'm coach rick remember subscribe like see so see all the videos all the bald truth i'm happy i'm here mark's good to see you i'm coach rick and that's the bald truth You've been listening to The Bald Truth with Coach Rick of the Peak Performance Group, the company that helps people and organizations reach their potential. If you're looking for a way to grow your organization, whether it's sales or strategic direction, the Peak Performance Group coaches can help you grow with their proven business acceleration process. Call them at 817-748-7425 or go to mypotentialplus.com and they'll connect you with the right coach for you. And remember to subscribe and like below. The Bold Truth Leadership Podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, and YouTube video. Hit like and subscribe to get every episode. Thanks for listening to the Bald Truth Leadership Podcast. And until next time, roll up your sleeves and get to work and you can make things happen. I'm Coach Rick, and that's the Bald Truth. <laughs>